Hey friends, big news. Everybody gets a free new synth. No, I'm serious. Everybody who has Lite, Intro, Standard, or Ableton Suite gets a free new synth, and it's actually amazing. It's like Ableton is Oprah, and you just won the Olympics and the lottery on your birthday, and it's Christmas. Are you ready? Ready? Check out the all-new Ableton Drift. You might be looking at this thing and thinking, but my synth has more modulation, filters, oscillators, and can do so much more. And you'd be right. There's literally a synth plugin feature arms race happening right now, where most all synth developers are trying to make their feature list longer than the competitions. The idea is the more features that they cram into the thing, the more money they'll get out of it. But before all the noise of modern day markets, guys like the late Dave Smith and the late Bob Moog used to sit in quiet rooms for years and years, tweaking the voltages, swapping components, and perfecting the interface. So no matter what settings you dial in on your instrument, it sounds great. Basically, they made it hard to make the synth sound bad, and that's exactly the idea behind Ableton Drift. This little cutie pie is blowing my mind. Now, full disclosure, Ableton is sponsoring this video and they sent me Drift early for review, but they have no say over what I'm about to say about this device. The idea behind Drift is to behave like an old analog synthesizer, where the oscillators, the tunings, the filters, they drift in and out of phase, causing that all elusive but so musical thing that only vintage analog synthesizers could provide. I've heard a lot of simulations of this vibe, and a lot of them are pretty good, but I have to say that Drift nails it and does it without using a lot of resources. Now, you could just load up an instance of Drift and get great tones just tweaking stuff in it, but there are some things to know about this little guy that will really unlock its potential. So let's take a dive into Ableton Drift. Let's check it out. Okay, so as you can see in true Ableton fashion, Drift has a gloriously minimalistic user interface. But just like almost all Ableton devices, there's a lot more under the hood. You just have to look. The first time I opened up Drift, I was a little concerned. I was like, what is this thing? Why would anyone care about a two oscillator synthesizer? But once you start to really get into this thing and you start to open it up and see the possibilities and listen to what it does, it consistently rewards you with amazing tones. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. So in this first little section, here these are our oscillators so when I play you can hear there are two oscillators there's a sine waveform that's an octave below a saw waveform just kind of a classic synth tone right and when you click on this drop down list you can see all these different waveforms and you might be thinking that's all that's all that I get well what you have to do is you have to explore each one of these because each one of these have different options so we have the shape control and what this does depends upon the waveform that you choose so the first waveform this saw waveform when you start to turn up shape take a listen We have this glorious and beautiful hard sync kind of sound, right? So each one of these waveforms that you choose, shape does something totally different. So here's the sine waveform, and I'll go ahead and turn off oscillator two for now. We can hear that shape on the sine waveform adds a wave folding. Kind of like a sine wave folding. Then if we go to the triangle, we kind of have a harsher wave folding, right? And then if we go over to this shape, we have what kind of sounds like saw wave, like pulse width modulation, right? Adds a little bit of pitch drift too. Really, really pleasing sound there, right? The next waveform is really interesting. As we turn shape up, kind of add these harmonics and make the wave shape thinner. Pretty cool thing. You've seen saw. Now going over to this square wave, this is more of like a yet another uh, hard sync kind of sound. <laughs> Pretty sweet. And then finally, of course, we have a square wave, and guess what? Pulse with modulation. Now, why should you care about this synthesizer? 
check this out. So I'm going to go ahead and go to oscillator 2 and turn it on. And let's put it on square wave. So now we have two square waves. And let's just go ahead and play them at the same octave. So take a listen to this. Do you hear that changing over time? There was this kind of like high-pitched frequency that kind of came in after a little bit. What's up with that? Well, essentially, the oscillators are always on. You just can't hear them unless you play a note, okay? So this is how synthesis works in the analog realm. Now, why this matters to you is that if you have two waveforms that are identical, but they're not spinning at exactly the same time or at exactly the same pitch, you get this interesting kind of alive, breathing, moving kind of sound, right? This is what happens when two oscillators are out of phase with each other. The beating heart of drift is this control right here, drift. So if I turn drift all the way to zero, take a listen. Nothing's changing. As I turn this up, take a listen. Essentially, the idea is that what the drift control will do is it will make tiny fluctuations to the phase of the waveforms, to the tuning of the waveforms, and the filter position, and all kinds of other little tiny changes. And those little tiny changes will have huge ramifications as you start to use this instrument and get into the different things that it does, okay? So getting back to oscillator two, you can detune it and really get that beautiful sound. Or you can turn it all the way up to plus seven and get these kind of musical ratios, right? Okay, so I'm gonna bring this back to the center. Now, none of the waveforms on oscillator two, as you can see, there's a little bit less, can be changed with the shape control. That's only the uh, oscillator one, okay? Let's go ahead and switch this back to the saw waveform. I'll put this back on maybe triangle or something. Okay, so like I was saying before, Drift was designed to behave like a real analog synthesizer, okay? So the settings that you have in one section can have big changes over the settings in another section. For example, the filter. In this case, we have two different types of filters. We have a, what you have a classic 12 decibel filter and a 24 decibel filter, right? These aren't modeled after any specific filter. They're designed just for drift, right? So, so the filter has two different types. There is a 12 decibel and a 24 decibel filter. You can see the slope changes as I click on this. Now, just like on an analog synthesizer, the amount of the oscillator signal that's being fed into the filter will yield different results. So this filter will sound totally different depending upon where you have it. So that's the sound, kind of like the vanilla sound. But if I turn up this oscillator, take a listen. Notice that it sounds like the resonance got quieter. So the oscillator's up all the way up. I have resonance all the way up. Take a listen to this. You can hear kind of like this really like pleasing background distortion, right? Now take a listen to what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off oscillator two. Take a listen to what happens to this filter as I turn oscillator one back down. Wow. Super pleasing sounds coming out of this thing, right? It's almost like the filter will take off more if you have less oscillator signal going into it, right? That's because we're distorting the filter. We're, we're sending so much oscillator signal into the filter that it's causing harmonics to be made. We could go over to oscillator one, for example, and turn it on a sine waveform. I'm gonna turn the resonance all the way down. Now take a listen to this. So right now that sine waveform sounds like you would expect it to, but as I turn it up, we can hear harmonics being added. That's because we're distorting this filter stage, right? So that's really great. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the, the filter frequency back up. Now check this out. I'm gonna bring this oscillator back to a respectable, yeah, negative six, right? Now, we don't have that many harmonics in the signal right now. Let's add harmonics in an interesting way. So your, your classic pitch mod, we could use the LFO, for example. Here's the LFO, and we could change the pitch of this. And you can see the LFO gets real slow here, so you can get that kind of drunk synth sound. Right. But what's really interesting about Drift is that you may be looking at this thing and thinking, well, wait, there's no FM synthesis. Well, how am I going to do any FM tones? Well, you actually can. The LFO has all these different interesting modes that you can do with the rate. So right now, this is a normal frequency-based rate. This is a millisecond-based rate. And then this is a sync rate, so syncing to the DAW. But this one is really interesting. This is a audio rate 
ratio based on the pitch of the original oscillator. So check this out. Notice that we're bringing harmonics in because what are we doing? This is frequency modulation or FM synthesis. And of course we can change the ratio. Super awesome. So the next thing we can do is we could actually use envelope two, for example, to modify this. So let's go to envelope two and I'm gonna turn the sustain stage all the way down. These are our two envelopes. Obviously this one, this top one is for the volume. But if I use envelope two to change the LFO amount over the pitch, we can control this FM synthesis. Check this out. So of course, different ratios are gonna give you different sounds. And we can even go under the original pitch to make the FM oscillator be an octave lower. And maybe we want more harmonics in a different way. Instead of adding them here, we could add them by just driving the filter more. And that effect is kind of more mid-rangey, right? Let's try it with a different filter. Now, of course, we can mess with the filter frequency over here. These are two different mod sources you can mess with the, the filter frequency with. So let's go ahead and use envelope two. Right? Super awesome. Now check this out. Listen to how different this sounds as I turn oscillator one down. You can compensate over here. Now as you can see, both the oscillator section and the filter section look very similar. And the way that they're modulated is very similar. You have two different sources right here for the pitch of the oscillators. And you have two different sources for the frequency of the filter. So you'll also notice that we have LFO here in the filter frequency mod. So what we could do here is we could turn the envelope effect off. We could turn the LFO pitch modulation all the way down and instead we could use the LFO's audio rate modulation over the filter frequency. Take a listen to this. So you can see there's so much more under the hood on this thing, and that's just one example, right? Insane. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a new instance. This time, let's take a look at something totally different. So right now, this is the vanilla setting that you get with Drift. So what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna take a look at something else. On envelope two, you can see that we used it earlier, but if you click on this button, you make it cycling or looping, and essentially you turn this envelope into its own kind of LFO because it's looping over time. Let's go ahead and choose that to mess with the filter frequency. And of course you can also see, whoa, wait a minute, you can send it into audio rate. <laughs> Pretty awesome, right? But let's focus on this mode for now. Something else you can do with this that you can't do with the standard LFO is you can actually tilt the shape. So check this out. Now let's go ahead and put it into audio rate. <laughs> okay, so check this out. When you have it in audio rate, you can get some really interesting results happening by changing the tilt. <laughs> Pretty awesome, right? All right, I'll put this back on a standard mode. Now, I wanna show you something else. I'm gonna turn off the pitch mod here. We also have a noise oscillator here, so check this out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the oscillators all the way down. So now we just have this noise. 
You could actually use the filter to play notes as well. So you can turn the resonance up. And then you can turn this control up for key following. So check this out. So essentially I'm using the filter as an oscillator, right? And so you could run an oscillator through it too. For some totally different tones, right? So I'll go ahead and make a more pretty sound. I'll open up the release a bit. So now that I've done this, if I go back to my envelope two and put it back at audio rate, check this out. Turn the noise down a bit. Just amazing tones you can get with just the smallest little adjustments, right? Cool, so I'll go ahead and turn noise down. I'm gonna turn this envelope uh, effect off of the filter frequency and now we get I'll go ahead and introduce oscillator 2. This time let's choose a saw waveform. Now let's go ahead and turn up drift. And we just get that instant beautiful kind of sound right where those oscillators are just slightly out of phase with each other. Okay, so this is a perfect opportunity to show you the modes. So over here at this section, we have the ability to change the mode, the way that Drift is handling the voices. So poly mode is kind of how you'd expect. You can limit the voices to like four, for example, in the case that your CPU is spiking, right? You're really doing a lot. Now the next mode is called mono, and essentially this is nice because it you know brings your voice count down to zero, and so you can do leads and bass lines, right? Let's work on a bass tone. Maybe we'll put the LFO on... Uh, half, add it to the pitch mod, now check this out, now this next slider they call it mono thickness, but essentially what this does is it adds a bunch of sub oscillators as you turn it up, I think the, the total is uh, three, to the original voice and you get this huge thick sound, take a listen. And then if drift is all the way at zero, you just get a stack. And it's all perfectly in phase, but of course, as you turn up drift. <laughs> just huge, huge sounds from there, right? Now the next mode is amazing. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna turn this effect off. And what we're going to do is we're going to listen to this just with the drift all the way down on 32 voices. So take a listen. So that's kind of what you'd expect out of kind of any synth plugin. But check this out. I'll turn up drift. Still what you would expect. But now there's this percentage that you can add of stereo spread. And what this does is this takes the voices and moves them across the stereo field. If you have drift all the way at zero, it doesn't do anything. But once you start to drift stuff, this is where all the magic happens. Oh, it's so cool. Now check this out. Another thing you can do is as you detune things, It almost sounds like Detune is adding more stereo spread. That's because the it's interacting with the drift control and interacting with this to cause that kind of effect. Just amazing sounds you can get from this. Let's go ahead and use Envelope 2 to open up our filter a little bit. So that's the stereo mode, and man, is it pleasing. Now, we also have unison mode, and essentially this is sort of the same thing, except it takes four voices of each note that you play, and it detunes them against themselves. So one note sounds like this. And it will be totally mono unless you turn up drift.
Now, if you bring this down to four voices, you'll only be able to play one note at a time because Unison is using four voices up to do its detuning. <laughs> So this can be useful to make like big sounding bass lines and stuff like that. Right, just so much fun. So you definitely need to get into the modes when using Drift to get this really interesting result happening. Now let's look at something else. So right now we're using the LFO, or at least we were using the LFO at audio rate. Let's switch it back to its normal rate and maybe we'll apply it to the pitch. So now we get a nice... <laughs> kind of drunk synth sound, right? Now you have all the waveforms that you'd normally expect, like triangle. Let's go ahead and instead we'll put this on the filter frequency, why not? Go ahead and put this on triangle, for example. Now you'll notice that it's free running. You can always hit this R right here, and this will re-trigger the LFO every time you play a note. Now these are all the expected waveforms, but if you go down to this one, sample and hold, essentially this is a random source. So as I turn up rate... <laughs> Couldn't turn my voice count up. You can hear that we're just choosing different um, held modulations depending upon the rate. And of course, you can use this as noise. Let's go ahead and switch this back over to stereo. <laughs> So right now I'm using this on the filter, but if I use this on set on pitch, take a listen. Adds a really pleasing grit to the sound, right? Okay, next we have Wander. And what Wander is, is it's sort of the sample and hold, but instead what we've done is we've kind of slewed the beginning and end of it to get more of a warbly sound. So if you're really looking for that drunk synth sound, this is a great way to get it. Just super great, right? And then finally we have linear and exponential envelope. This basically does the opposite of what we did earlier with envelope two, turning it into an LFO. We're now turning the LFO, guess what? Into an envelope. So yeah, you can use this to, for example, let's do a pitch drop with this. <laughs> So you'll notice that the LFO is not repeating, right? So you can do that with a linear and an exponential envelope. Okay, Okay. so here's a fresh instance of Drift. And one more thing I wanna show you is the mod matrix. So essentially, you could take any of these modulators and apply them to any of these destinations. So for example, I could take pressure, which is you know aftertouch, and what I could do is I could add that to the low pass frequency. So I'm gonna turn this down a bit. Now, depending upon how hard I push, so there's a bunch of different things that you can do that are kind of under the hood. You just have to kind of get into this area right here, right? Cool. So as you can see in here, Drift is an amazing instrument. It sounds really good, really, no matter what settings you put on it. And it really excels at doing melodic duties like bass lines and melodies and chords and stuff like that. Of course, it's not designed to do some crazy, super nutso EDM ultra drop, right? It's not really for that. It's for beautiful unfolding tones that have a really strong fundamental pitch, right? Now, if you like my teaching style, I'm gonna be adding Drift to my sound design and synthesis with Ableton Live online course that you can take. I'm also gonna be giving you all the presets that I used in this tutorial up here for free. So go ahead and check those out. Thanks for watching everybody. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, I'll see you next time.